Hi everyone, so I'm here with uh, Alex Ketch from Glyph, which is the leading provider of identity in the capital markets world and very widely adopted. It's one of the few great innovations that came out of the 2008 financial crisis and has done a lot for improving how the capital markets work and how identity works in a more open, globally connected way. So Alex, you know, thanks for chatting with us. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, could you tell us more about the LEI and Glyph Yes. And, and what the goals there are? Absolutely. So Glyph started from the um, realization that identity before the financial crisis was all at national level, so very fragmented. And when Lehman Brothers collapsed, it was hundreds of legal entities who fell down overnight, and people didn't have a view on the exposure they had towards those many, many hundreds of legal entities because the identity system was, was in-country and was not easily reachable. So they invented the legal entity identifier as some sort of a passport for companies that can be presented everywhere in the world and identify companies everywhere in the world. So since then, it has been implemented for OTC derivative transaction, capital markets. Uh, MIFID uh, has a say, no LEI, no trade. So as a mandatory requirement to identify companies in the capital markets to ensure that uh, transactions are understood, are transparent, and are standardized uh, at identity level across the world. Yeah, I know in many cases, you can't even do a transaction with counterparties without getting an LEI. Correct. And there's official LEI issuers in most countries, mm -hmm. and it's become kind of um, the most ubiquitous, most generally used source of identity for corporations mm -hmm. for the purposes of financial transactions. Yes, it's the only actually identifier uh, system globally that is actually created and supported by regulators. I have a board of regulators, of 70 regulators, that make sure that the LEI system remains a public good, accessible by everybody for the purpose of uh, capital market, but also cross-border payments, supply chain management, ESG reporting, etc., etc. Yeah, so as a public good, I think it's very um, compatible mm -hmm. with the, the blockchain ethos mm -hmm. and, and how we're supposed to have big open systems. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also very compatible with the standards world because it sets uh, a global standard mm -hmm. similar to what we try to do with interoperability and data and those things. And I think it's all very compatible because the identity information you folks create is a kind of data that needs to go on chain and needs to be made interoperable. So I think there's a lot of compatibility there. There's also the VLEI, mm -hmm. which is an, an interesting variation of the LEI that's pretty recent. Mm -hmm. what, what is the goal of, of the VLEI? So the VLEI is the verifiable LEI. It's a self-sovereign identity and a verifiable credential system for organizations and the people working for that organization or the people engaged with that organization, like, for example, clients, be it corporate clients or retail clients. So uh, it, it's based on self-sovereign identity construct because once a company has its VLEI system in place, they can autonomously issue credentials to their staff, to their employees, to their suppliers, to whoever they need, to prove authenticity of data, uh, be it the age of an employee, the, uh, qualif the accredited qualification status of an, on, on, of an investor, pretty much everything and anything. And it's tightly link the individuals with those organizations in a way that the organization can revoke those credentials anytime. It's a decentralized system, not on blockchain, purposely not on blockchain, because we wanted it to be platform and technology agnostic. So it's an overlay service a protocol level that can then be plugged into any platforms who wants to leverage the VLEI and the LEI regulatory uh, created LEI system uh, for their applications. Right, so the VLEI is kind of a more scalable version of the LEI that's mm -hmm. something that can be plugged in into many different systems including yes. blockchains and then that leads to a kind of technical problem of how do you get the VLEI into all of those chains Mm -hmm. How do you get the VLEI to portably work across chains? And how does the, the VLEI become you know, a way to do identity in the blockchain industry? Yeah, and that's, my pro that's the problem I have, is how do I make it interoperable with, well, how do I implement it into all those platforms? Mm -hmm. And obviously the reason why I'm, uh, have a, I'm talking to you when you're in your staff is because it, it's, you are an obvious integrator of outside information to inside blockchain and, and more. And it's, an, it's a natural discussion we should have to see how we, you can help me bring the VLEI onto the various services that you enable cross-chain um, uh, with, with your partners here in Cybos and, and also maybe in the future with DeFi uh, partners. 
Right. And so how do you view CCIP and the Chainlink system and its, and its role in helping the LEI and VLEI get on chain? Well, I'm not a technologist in the room, so I don't know exactly how you would build that magic of integrating this overlay service into the various blockchains. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I've seen you've been doing for digital assets, enabling portability of assets from chain to chain, mm -hmm. uh, I see it the same way in, in a way in identity. So mm -hmm. being able to port identity from traditional infrastructure to blockchain A, blockchain B, blockchain C, because a transaction requires that right. cross-chain interoperability would be how I see it uh, yeah, I, I at think functional that, level. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's absolutely right. I think basically you have a way to do identity when you when you build various little whitelists on every chain, mm -hmm. which doesn't work because each of those whitelists only works for a, a single user or a single use case. Or a single chain. Or sometimes. a single chain. Yeah. And then the other way is to take things like the LEI and the VLEI and through Oracle networks and oracles inject it mm -hmm. into specific transactions mm -hmm. or specific assets on an as-needed basis. Exactly. And because Chainlink is the only system that injects the data and can move the data across chains as well, mm -hmm. we can inject the data and then we can also at the same time enable it to move across yes. chains. Yes. So you don't just get the ability for the VLEI and e LEI identity scheme to work on chain, you get the ability for that scheme to work across chains. Yes. And Chainlink kind of provides both of those things in a single platform. And so as a platform, that, that seems valuable to you. Exactly. And, and when that information needs to be verified, because verifiable LEI is a, is a zero trust model where you obviously need to verify that the credential is still valid, has not been revoked. I also see that path out uh, of the various blockchain implementation going through a chain link uh, type of infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's what, what we'll be working on together mm -hmm. and excited uh, to have you here with us. Thanks okay. for explaining the LEI and the VLEI and how identity can be integrated in, into chains mm -hmm. and excited to find a way to, to make it very accessible and usable mm -hmm. in, in the blockchain world, both on the digital asset side and on the Web3 DeFi side. So Absolutely. thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Very excited.